Hello, Nikolai Markovich from Echo Lake Technologies, echolaketech.com. In this video, which is actually a continuation of a video on creating a, a business uh, admin dashboard, um, which I'll provide in the link below, but this video is a continuation of that design. And in this video, you're going to see how to set up a marketplace. Um, and this one here I've got set up already, so just kind of do a quick demo and then we'll get into the design. So this is basically just a couple of um, items in this this business here, uh, Joe's A1 business in the business uh, picture there, pictures of Kiwis, and then you can go and edit these. You can change you know, the price to three dollars even and then you'll see that it updates there. Change that back. The 350, so you can go and make changes to it and so forth. You can add items um, as well. So if I uh, just delete this pineapple and then I go back in and add pineapple, I'll just make a, a number. Um, so pine one as a skew number, and we'll say this is oops, three dollars rather. Um, and just pick the pineapple picture there. It's going to load and then add the item. And there it is. So that's what we're going to be doing in this video um, as the first part. And the second part, I'm going to move over to this screen. And this is actually the um, consumer or the customer's view of it. So in this example here, these are all the different items from the cart, um, or rather from the, the business, from Joe's business. And you can add them to a cart here. You can change the quantities like that, and that dynamically changes the prices and so forth. And if you want, you can add more items to it and so forth. So, uh, we're going to walk through the design in detail on this so you can see how to set up a storefront in your own app. So let's start with the storefront admin. So this is the business owner. I'm not going to spend too much time on this upper part that's again in the prior video. Uh, one thing I will note, and this is kind of a little uh, tip to help you out with your design. So you'll see here that this is current user's business name. Um, and you'll see on some of the other pages that I have current page. And I, I like to put this um, text in here. So when I have different users, current page user, current user, and so forth, it gets kind of confusing um, who's logged in and so forth. So I just put this little text field in there. And I also add this conditional. So when it's in development version, then this is visible. And basically what this means is that when you're doing development work and you want to do preview and so on and so forth, that this will be visible. Now, if you're in the live mode, and I'm, I'm not going to go in live mode, but if you were in live mode, um, since it's no longer the development version, then this text would be hidden. And just to go uh, rather over here, just to show you, the element is uh, visible on page uh, load, so that's not clicked. And the reason being is because if you were in live mode, it would still be showing. So you want to make sure that you've got that clicked off, just like that. Do the conditional in development is development version, make it visible. So that's just a quick tip. Um, now back to the program here. Um, so we've got this repeating group. And in this repeating group, We've got a store item. And this is basically the business owner. Uh, you have control of what items, and it's basically the items are uh, simply the items created by the current user. So during the search here, when you go, I'm just going to go back here. And so these are basically all the items that are entered by the store owner as opposed to these items here, which are shown as the store owner. Um, but when you get to the cart, and I'm jumping ahead a little bit, but these are going to be actually cart items and not store items. And I'll get to that in a little bit into the database. So what we have here, 
is that repeating group again, and I just simply have the picture, the description. Let me go over to this view here. It's a little bit easier. So the description, so it's simply the current cells, store items, description, the price, and then I have this format in there as well, and then the SKU number. You can add whatever you need for your storefront. Now I do want to go to format here just so you can see. You do have choices and the default is number, but since this is a currency, uh, set it up as a currency, two decimal places, uh, decimal uh, separator, and comma, and so on and so forth. So kind of pretty straightforward there to format your, your, your dollars. Um, edit, so basically on the edit, this is just going to open up a pop-up and so display data, so this is important so that when you do go and open up a, um, a pop-up, you need to send that current cells store item. If you don't and you open up the pop-up, the bubble won't know what data to use in that pop-up. So this is a critical thing when you're using uh, pop-ups in your, in your workflow to have this step in here to display data. And then you basically just show the pop-up. So let me just kind of quickly go here. So element actions and then display data so that's this first one here and then the second one is element actions show so those are the commands that you want to use for these two steps here now let's go back to the design and let's get to the uh, pop-up all right so to edit the pop-up uh, it's a simple pop-up just a little text here to edit item and then basically the parent group store, um, let me actually go here. You want to make sure uh, to back up a little bit to set this as the store item because this pop-up here, the content is the store item. So from the workflow that I just showed you, you're going to be sending data to this pop-up and it's of type store item. And in here, uh, again, parent groups, store items, description, Parent groups, store items, SKU number, and parent groups, uh, price. Uh, and then in here, I've also added a upload image. So let's just go. I mean, most of these are, are text. And then I used uh, input here. And then picture uploader right here. So this picture uploader is that. And basically, when you go and you click on it, it'll automatically uh, open pop up open a, a window and then you can go and upload pictures so upload item so when that's pressed we make changes to the store item and uh, it's the parent group store item um, we take the input from that pop-up value the picture uploaders value or the price value or the SKU value so basically those inputs um, are going to get uh, put into the, the database. Uh, then we do a hide and reset. I like to do a reset just in case. So if you're, if you're in the um, uh, window and you close out or whatever, I just, as a habit, it's good to do a reset just to clean out um, any little miscellaneous data that got added for whatever reason that you didn't want to save. Um, close, that's just simply hide the pop-up, reset the data inside that pop-up. And that is it. I don't think I have any conditionals on anything on here. Oh, so on the button here, when it's hovered, just change the color. So it's a nice visual cue. So when people press the button, or rather hover the, on the button, it shows them that they are actually hovering it. So that's it for the edit pop-up for the delete. Um, again, when it's hovered, change the, the color. Um, so simply go send the data once again. So we want to open up a pop-up, but before we open up the pop-up, we want to go and send that current cells item. And then for the pop-up, So we basically have, again, type of content, store item. And when we click yes, it deletes the store item. 
So that will remove it from the database um, altogether. And then we just basically hide the window. And for the no, it just basically hides the window. Now one thing you can do on here, which I don't think I have set up. Okay, so this pop-up can't be closed by pressing escape. So if you click on that, basically it's going to force your users to click one of these two buttons because either one of these buttons will close your window. Now if um, you have this checked off and the user clicks anywhere else on the app or hits the escape button, the window will not close. So just make sure if you do use this, you want to make sure that one of your buttons does indeed close the window um, or else the user is going to have a not pleasant experience because that window won't close. They won't know how to close it. So I'm just going to leave that checked off. And that is, that's basically it for setting up the content in the, um, for the business. Um, on this I just have one row here uh, with four columns. You can set this up however uh, you'd like for your repeating group, whatever makes sense for your, uh, for your app. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over uh, to the storefront with no login. So in the, the prior video, which again I'll have a link to below, um, there are these three pages, the one that we just went through, the admin and there's one with no login and then one with a storefront with a login. I'm going to focus in this video on the one with no login. So basically your users um, or your, your storefront owners, their end users, their customers can get a link and when they click on the link it will bring them to that storefront page uh, without requiring a login. And this one here will require a login. And so let's just go to this. Uh, basically, it looks kind of similar to the, the business owner one. And um, what we have here is, uh, again, just the business name. Now notice here it's current page user. Um, on the prior screen, it was current user. Uh, so the reason why is that it's current page user. Um, we're sending data. Um, it's embedded into the URL that it knows that it's this business owner's uh, page of content of data. And in here we have a simple repeating group. All I have is um, a search for the current page user. So the current page user, again, it's going to be the store uh, owner. Um, they've created their list of, um, of products that they're selling. And so we're showing those that list of products in this repeating group. Um, current sales, store items, uh, description. Actually, let me go to text here, uh, text editor. Uh, description, the price, again, formatted, and the SKU. So it looks similar to the repeating group for the, the storefront. Um, now this is the view that the um, end consumer would get. A picture of it. I believe, let me just check, yep, I do have um, a pop-up so they can look at the uh, image. So again, we want to go and send the, the data, display the data, and then we do the pop-up. If we don't do this display, then when we get to the pop-up, uh, Bubba won't know what data to show. So let me just go here to the pop-up. Again, store item is a type of content for the pop-up. And then in here, I just have a simple image. Uh, where is it? Right here. So just use this image, put it in here, parent groups, um, picture. I don't think I have a conditional on anything here. Probably do on this. Yep, so when it's hovered, change the color. This close simply just hides the pop-up. I also have this X on here, which is an icon. So this icon, and it just hides it as well. So for the icons, uh, if you're not familiar with them, so when you click on icon, and I'm just going to put one right here, it comes up with this default. You have all these, these choices on here. You can scan through. Um, I don't even, let's see, what was this called? I don't even remember, oh, close. So just type in close and you get these choices here. 
Um, you've got, again, a, a bunch of different ones. So plus, minus, there's a bunch of different choices in there. Okay, so that's it for the pop-up. So again, when that window or when this image is clicked, then the pop-up occurs and um, it'll open up uh, the pop-up with a picture. Now this here, add to, to cart. Um, before we get to add to cart, I want to talk a little bit about the data structure. because This gets perhaps a little bit confusing. Now, think of this app in terms of two types of users. You have the business owner and they've created the products that they want to sell. And then you have their customers, and their customers want to go and choose what items they want to buy. Now, <clears throat> everything is pretty straightforward until you start um, adding quantities. And when you start adding quantities, you can't go, if everything was quantity one, everything would be simple. You could use the, the data structure see here where are they so store items so this is let me go to data types here store items so these are the this is the data structure for the business owner to create the products that they want to sell and we need to create a cart item and this is going to be used by the end user by the end customer. And the reason why we need to do this is because the end customer can't go and change quantities. So if you look at uh, store items, you, you can't go and change this because this is what the business has set up. And if we go change the quantity, and so let's use the example of pineapple. If you have a customer A that wants a quantity of one of a pineapple, and you have customer B who wants five pineapples. If you use the store item here, it's the same database entry, and so which is controlled by the, the business owner. But if you have consumers changing the quantity, then it impacts the, the database, and you don't want that. What you want to do is you want to basically create a cart item, and basically within the cart item, each customer will have their, they'll be creating their own cart item. So customer A will have a cart item of a pineapple, and the store item here is that store item from the business owner of a pineapple. And then the uh, second customer will also, when they choose a pineapple for their cart, they're gonna create in the database a cart item of pineapple, and it'll be linked to the store item. So the quantity here, since each customer and customer is going to be one will choose one pineapple, another customer can choose five pineapples, a third customer can choose ten pineapples. They'll each have their own quantity that they can um, track, uh, I shouldn't say track, but update in the database. And then similarly the, the price um, as, as well. And the reason for the price, which I'll get to in a little bit, is that's going to be used when you have the quantity. So if you have quantity, so say the pineapple is one dollar, you have quantity one, the price is, is one. But when you start getting into um, you know five pineapples, um, you want to take the price from the, the store item, store item here, which has the price controlled by the business owner. And you want to go and use the quantity um, times that price that the business owner has provided and then do the multiplication and store it in price. So it's, this is really kind of extended price. Um, so it would be um, $1 times 5, so $5. And then that way each end consumer, uh, their cart will have their own pricing and quantities to manage. Now in here, the cart, so the cart basically takes all of the cart items. So basically in the cart, we have a list of cart items. So we've got the different fruit. We got pineapples and bananas and oranges and all that. So every time an end customer adds those to the cart, it goes to this list into the, the cart. The total price, which we'll get to the math in a few moments, it's going to be a summation of each one of those, and that'll store the total price. So in cart item, we go, we have the, the unit price, which we get from store item. So if we go to store item, this is basically the item price or the unit price. The cart item, we go and we take that unit price times the quantity and we store it at the, the price here. 
and then when we get to the cart, we get every item in the in the cart, the list of cart items. We get the prices for every one of those, and then we do a summation, and that's the total price for the cart. And then we also have user to keep track of who the user is. Uh, so that's how the data structure, it, it gets a little bit confusing on how it's um, set up, but just think you have the business owner who has uh, products they want to provide and the pricing for those products, and then you have the end consumer who needs to consume those, those prices, but they also have quantities that they want. They want more than one of an item. So we need to create cart items for that end consumer so that bubble for your app can track that. And then we want to have a, uh, I'm sorry, cart item. And then when we have, want a cart, and the cart is basically got all of the items that that end consumer wants. So that's how the, the data structure is for this. Um, so when we do an add cart, um, again, another um, uh, pop up uh, will happen. But what we need to do here, there is a conditional or an only when. So when the button add cart is clicked, we do a search for it, and we basically look to see, is there any cart that a, a customer has created already? And if the, if the count is zero, what we want to do is execute this workflow. And then if the count is greater than zero, so again, it's the same search, we're going to do a search for the cart and see if the current user has created a cart. If yes, then we're going to go and do this workflow. So this is kind of the initial state. Brand new cart needs to be created. And this is a pre-existing cart for a specific customer. OK, so on this one, we need to first create a cart. Since there isn't a cart that exists, we need to create a cart for that customer. And basically, since we've clicked a button from a cell, we want to take that current cell's item, and we want to put that into the cart. And then we want to take that price and the quantity as well. And then we want to do is create a new cart. So the cart hasn't been created yet either. And we want to add this item. So again, remember, we need to create cart items, the things that are going to go into the cart. And we also need to create the cart itself. So this is what we're doing in step two. We're creating that cart and we're putting that item in it. And then we basically display the data again, the result from step two, the cart, into a pop-up, and then we show the pop-up. Now let me just go to this workflow before we get to the pop-up. So again, this is where a, a cart is um, already there, and we need to create a cart item. So one of the things, so customers already created a cart, they already have pineapples in their cart, now what we need to do is they want to buy banana, so we need to go and create a banana, and we put it into the cart. Um, so again, it's the the the, the current sales uh, store item, um, and then we got the price and the quantity, the default quantity price. Now I do have this search in here, and the reason why I have this search in here is we've already got the cart created, and we're now adding things items into the cart. Now what we don't want to do is we don't want to add something that's already in the cart. So if a customer has uh, bananas in the cart and then they go and you know, a few minutes later they go and they add bananas again, we don't want to have duplicate sets of bananas in there. We want to control that. And basically what we do is we see if the store item um, is the current sales store item. So basically in that cart, do we already have bananas in our cart? And if we do, then we don't want to go and create something new. We don't want to create another cart item of banana because we've already created one, so we don't want to do it again. So basically, uh, that's what this uh, condition does here, or this search in the count does here. So if there is no banana or orange or whatever cart item created, then we're going to go and create it. And then we make change, we just go and we add the item to, again, a search for the cart, it's current user, we just add that item. And we go to the pop-up window. Now this, this, this right here, this step is only going to execute, I shouldn't say it's going to execute, it'll, it'll execute, but um, it's going to take the results from step one. Now there may not be anything from step one because it's already been created. Again, if a banana has been created, 
we don't need to go and uh, recreate another cart item of banana. So that's how that workflow is. Um, now let's see here, we want to go and look at the cart. So when the cart opens, we basically, again, type cart. Uh, what we have here is this for the total sum, so the repeating group, which is this repeating group here, repeating group cart item. So repeating group cart item, list of cart items. So this is basically all of the items that are in there. And the price of those, we do the sum of those. So this is, so we have price, which is one of the, the data fields, price, and then we have sum. Now there's a bunch of different options on here. And where there's some right there, so you can choose some, and then do the format again. The default is number. We want this as currency. So what this basically does is a nice, actually a nice little feature that Bubble has is it takes all of these items in this repeating group, all of the prices, and it does a summation automatically. It's pretty nice. Okay, the repeating group. Um, so parent group, carts, um, cart items. So this is all the cart items uh, for that cart. So basically um, we don't need to do a search here because it's the parent group's cart. We already know that it is this user, so it's going to take all the cart items because we sent them, the, we sent the data from the workflow to this pop-up. Uh, right here simple text field, so we have the description, the um, item description, the item price, price, uh, um, the, um, let's see, total price as well. So this is basically, again, this unit price is determined by the business owner, and then the total price is that price times the quantity, and then the SKU in here. Your app, you're probably going to have different uh, information in here um, as well, but just for this demo, for example, you can see how this, this works. So current sales, cart item. So the cart item is what the um, end customer has, ent um, has added into their cart. The store item uh, is what the business owner has created, and then they dictate what the item description is, the business owner does. So it's kind of like a um, cascading, um, if you will, of the data. You start from the cart, you go and you look at the cart item, and then the cart item is really the store item, which is controlled by the, uh, the, the vendor, the, the business owner. And then what else do we have? We have the picture of the item as well. So current sales, cart items, store items, uh, picture. And then the, the quantity. So this is just a uh, simple uh, text field. I did put a minimum value and a maximum value, so you don't want negative numbers in here and so forth. You could put zero in here, and then if it was zero, you could have it set up so that it deletes the item um, if you wanted to. There's different ways you can, you can go and set that up. Placeholders quantity, and then basically we take the card items uh, uh, quantity. Now for quantity in the workflow, it's basically uh, when the, the, um, the value has changed. So just to kind of show you quick. So for, you click on elements here. So add an event, elements, input value has changed. So that's basically what this, this one is. Did I delete the wrong one? I did, so do an undo. So we want that one, we don't want that one. Okay, here we go. So basically, when the input is changed, what we want to do is um, change the quantity and then the, the cart's um, item price times the input value. So again, this is where we go and we take that cart item and we take the, the quantity and we take the price that was given by the business owner and we calculate what the price is. Um, for that item. So if you have one dollar pineapples, you want five of them, price will be five dollars. And then make changes to the cart. So basically again what we do is we're, we're going um, when we make that change and updating the, um, the pricing, the total price in the cart. And that is it for, oops, uh, where are we here? My cart. 
and that is it for here. So I've got this button, so in a future video, I'll uh, further expand on doing the checkout process, uh, most likely using Stripe to do that uh, payment setup. Um, and that's basically it. I do have this um, icon here to close the uh, the window out. And that's, that's the cart. Um, now store item your cart delete cart so um, in the event that you want to go and delete an item so actually let me go back click on delete it's going to go and it's going to again send that current sales cart item to the pop-up it's going to open the pop-up and then delete we click yes here again cart item is a type of content and for the workflow, we're going to make changes to the cart. Now, um, we are going to uh, remove the item. So we're going to, again, do the search. Whose cart is it? It's the current user's cart. And we want to remove this item from the cart. Okay. So that's one thing you want to do that you need to do so that gets removed from the cart. Now this here, you're probably wondering, why do I have a delete in here? The reason why I want to delete is because while this removes it from the, the, from the cart, the item is still in the database. And if you remember from this earlier flow here, right, create a new item, search for cart items, and if it's zero, then create one. Um, if it's not, then, well, let me go back here, sorry, the, the yes. Okay, so we need to actually go in the database and delete the item. So if we've created um, a banana and that instance of the banana is going to show up in the cart, but that banana is also going to be um, still uh, an, an item uh, that's in the database. So we need to actually delete that. And then if the customer wants that banana again, it'll go through the process of creating a new banana uh, instance to add to the cart. Uh, if we didn't do this um, and the user went back into the cart and wanted to um, uh, go and add banana, they wouldn't be able to. So this is an important step here to actually delete the instance in the database or else this right here, only when, will not work. Um, so yes, delete cart and then just hide the, hide the cart or hide the uh, pop-up rather. So that's basically it. Um, let's get to doing, um, oh, I also have this um, button here. Uh, so see cart items. It just simply displays um, the data for the cart. Again, user is current created by as a current user and then show the pop-up. So it's the same pop-up that we just went through right here. So I have a, um, I have this button here so that you can see it. So the way this is set up right now is if you add to a cart, it opens up the pop-up. If you click see cart, it opens up the pop-up. You may want to do something different. You may want to just basically add items to the uh, cart and then not open up the pop-up. And then if they want to see the items, you can do that. You might have another window here. So I use a pop-up. Uh, you might have another window somewhere on the page which basically just shows a tally of all the items um, that the uh, customer is adding to the cart. So there's a couple of different options. Again, depends on your design requirements. A couple of different ways you can go there. Okay, so let's go and again kind of run through this. So this is the um, the business setup. I'm not going to really uh, spend too much time on this. I think we've kind of gone through it. Um, you know, deleted items, edit items. You can change, you know, Blueberry if you spelt it wrong, update it. Yeah, pretty straightforward how you can update the items there. Um, I'm just going to show one thing on here. So you can see Blueberry, $3.50. Now, if I go on here and I make this $3, so this is the business owner's page. And this page here, I'm an end consumer, so you can see current user. So this is where this page here is set up so that you don't need a login to go and add things to the cart. 
but it's Joe's A1 business, his fruit stand or whatever. He just went, he, Joe, just went and uh, changed the price. So I can go back here, change the price again, back to, oops, that, and so forth. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is um, I actually have this instance here. I'm actually running this one in Chrome in an anonymous um, uh, uh, window. And then this one here is Safari. So then that way I can have a couple of different um, users that haven't logged in. Um, and actually this one here I set up as a different business. Let me, uh, here, let me go and do this. So... I'm just going and setting up a different uh, user. So you'll see here this is still user one because it's logged in. I need to go over here for a second to this main page and hit my logout. And then I need to do a refresh. So this again, this is why I put these current users in here just to show that um, it does get kind of confusing who's logged in. You open, close different screens, and so forth. Sometimes, um, you know, the you, you aren't who you think you are when you're logged in. So right now, I'm logged in as uh, nobody on this one on a Chrome, and this one here, I'm also logged in as nobody on a Chrome. I think my carts should both be empty, so that's empty, and this one's empty. Oh, I actually did have some things in there. Let's do this. Let's just go and uh, clean up the database real quick. We'll start fresh app data. Okay, so so basically, I guess I, while well, I'm, I'm here, so you see the cart items. Um, actually, let me go down to store items. Now I do want to go back up to to carts. Okay, so cart items. You got this little little um, gla magnifying glass. If you click on that. You can go and actually change it so it's set, set up as a unique ID, but it's kind of cryptic. So let's change it. Uh, you know what? Because it is um, set up to read the ID from store items. So I'm not going to be able to quite show you what I wanted to show you um, to basically show the, um, the ID or the description instead of the ID. Or did I choose the wrong ID? Okay, here we go. Store item. Uh, it's probably just going to, oh, it does show me. Okay, so basically instead of doing the unique IDs, so just put it back to unique IDs and getting these cryptic bubble created numbers, which are important, but um, since we're human, it's a little bit easier to read blueberry and kiwi instead. And then similarly here, I think the default is basically um, unique ID, but you can go in and change it to something that you can read. All right, I am going to go and you can go delete all of these. Cart, delete. Okay, should be all set. So this one was empty. And this one should now be empty. Great. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're just going to go, we'll add blueberries to it, and we'll change the quantity. So quantities two, $3.50, and it looks like I didn't do the format on here for dollars, but yeah, so $7, total price is $7. I'm going to close that. We'll add some kiwis, and kiwis, let's do five of those, so 505 and it updates appropriately. Again, if I change the quantity, it'll automatically change it because the way the uh, workflow is when the input value changes. And if I come over here, so this is a different um, user who's not logged in. Bubble knows that this is a different instance of a, of a browser page. So what I can do here is I can go add apples like that. And then, so bananas, let's do you know, 10 of those, like that, and it'll automatically add it up. Now, I can go and delete, like that. 
And oops, I didn't really mean to delete it, so let's add them back in. But I only want five of those as well. So 1745 it automatically um, calculates the price. And then over here, $40.05. So that's basically that user. Now, I, I do have another user. I did set up another business account just to give a little flavor to all this. And um, I guess I already had some uh, somebody uh, set up in this one. So let's just delete and start from, from scratch. So empty cart. And they want to add one of those. And let's see, add one of these whatever those things are. Okay, and then again, you can see the picture, you can make it expand it and so forth. On these, I did put a close. You know, it depends on what your design, what your user experience, what you want. Um, and I can also just click right here and it'll close the, the window. But what I wanted to show with this here is that this is a different business on here. Uh, still a uh, user who didn't need uh, to log in. They just went to the link and came to this page. And then right here, different business. These, these users are not logged in. None of these users are logged in. But I just wanted to show you that you can go and set up um, in your app different storefronts in which the end customers don't need to log in. And so your, your business customers who are setting up their storefronts, they can go in and um, anybody who has a link to their storefront can go in and add things to the cart. Uh, they can go and do the checkout, which I'll show in a future video. So it's, it's pretty powerful. It's um, pretty cool, the technology that Bubble provides in setting up these uh, storefronts. So I, this is a long video. I suspect this is probably the longest video that I've created yet. A lot of content in it. Um, if you have any questions, uh, please leave uh, you know comment below and I'll answer it. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And I do publish quite a few videos, so if you haven't, uh, subscribe to this channel and then you'll get uh, notified when I publish new videos. Uh, so for instance, I am looking to create a third video in this series uh, to show the, the checkout. So when you do the checkout, it'll go and uh, proceed with the uh, checkout process, probably using Stripe for that. So again, I thank you for sticking to the end here, and I will see you in the next video.